All the kings had many more armed men than they should have had at a peace summit. During the evacuation, several skirmishes broke out. The Kedwenis clashed with the Temerians. The Order's knights raped two sorceresses and killed those who dared try to help them. Do you think the Council and Conclave will survive? Well, they're established, and that's the only thing that prevented a wholesale massacre. Hard to say if they'll survive, but for the time being, no one's got any better ideas. Mages are part of this world, whether people like it or not. They have to have their rights, their place. Otherwise, another lodge will arise. I think he's coming too. Oh, bollocks. The whore son's in agony. Won't be long now. Look at that. The cleverest of elven bandits, beaten burnt like ordinary scum. This is the handiwork of some mage. I'd wager my wife on it. You shouldn't have taken that trinket. You know they'll ask what he had on him. And you'll not peep a word. Understand? Hey, you. Piss off. We've got a dangerous prisoner here. A prisoner? Did you capture him? None of your concern. Buzz off, freak. <sighs> Any idea what happened to Roach? Yes. Radovid tried I'm to warning you off. for the last time. Piss I'm off, sure I you said. can guess Roach turned him down. Some things will never change. Enough! They might not be... Want to tell me what that was about? It's Yorvith. I owed him that much. I guess I missed quite a bit. Yeah. Can you help him? Uh, I'm sorry, Geralt. This was high magic. Treating him will take time. Maybe months. I'm gonna miss the Kingslayer again. Stay with him, Triss. I'll be back for you when this is over. Geralt. I don't want you to get hurt. I can take care of myself. Not this time. I need to talk to him alone. The magic shield came down when the deliberations ended. I'll teleport Yorveth out of here, far away to Vergen. All right. Take care of yourself. This is no place for witches. Though I know you, and you appear wherever something important happens. True, though sometimes by accident. And this time, also a coincidence? Let's say I have something to take care of. In that case, hurry. Once we're done cleaning up this mess created by the Royal Soldiery, Loch Muin will be magically sealed. Getting out of here? Temporarily. We shall return soon enough to rebuild the city. Loch Muin will regain its former glory. Until that time, we need to keep the treasure hunters and troublemakers out. So Radovid trusts you? We shall win His Royal Majesty's trust by delivering Sheila de Tanserville and the other traitresses from the Lodge. That could take a while. Sheila's fled Loch Muin, via Megascope. We have time. She cannot hide forever. Sooner or later, she will be ours. Forgive me, I must attend to some matters. And don't dawdle, the city will be sealed in one hour. Took you a 
while. Is that bobble from Sheila's megascope? Mm -hmm. My final prank. I switched the diamonds. The one in the megascope has a flaw, minute, but just large enough to warp the teleport. The Emperor's magic theorists assured me the effect would be spectacular. I let her escape. You're heartless. You've no idea what the royal witch hunters have in store for her. A lot of pain for a long time. I don't doubt it. So, ready to lay your cards out on the table? No matter the game, there comes a point when all the players need to show their cards. I love that moment. But first... Vodka. I suppose my throat's a little dry. In that case, let's drink to old friendships. Covered your memory yet? Not entirely. Remember how we first met? Yeah, I saved your life. Couldn't think of a nicer way to pay me back? Frankly, I couldn't. I mean, taking care of another man's woman, Yennefer. I can't fathom what you saw in her, but I suppose there's no accounting for taste. The Winter Solstice 1270. Middenvern, the night of magic. Letho wasn't lying, the hunt had stopped. At the hanged man's tree, the spectral riders selected from among those they had taken. Yennefer was among them. A wraith cannot be killed, only driven away. Every witcher knows that. Yet the riders fell beneath the blows of our witcher's blades. Crimson blood flowed from under their dead men's armor. We could not kill them all. They were simply too many. A stalemate. He was different from all other elves. There was no shame in his gaze. He had never suffered persecution. He had endured no massacres. Humans had not taken his land. This elf was not of this world. He was an invader. We struck a deal. My soul for that of Yennefer. He agreed without hesitation. with me, friend. Got the feeling you left for a minute. Memories. I remember the hanged man's tree and the wild hunt. I remember the exchange. Me for Yennefer. So, cards out on the table. Unless you chase me all that way just to kill me. I chased you for lots of reasons. You owe me some explanations to start with. Let's say I do. Tell me about Yennefer. What happened after I departed? She was feverish for several days. Delirious. In agony. We thought that was it. She was on her way out. Somehow she recovered. But even then she was disoriented. Amnesia like you. What then? Well, the woman turned out to be quite a character. Throwing temper tantrums trying to seduce orcs, trying to drive a wedge between us. After you so nobly sacrificed yourself, we thought it'd be dumb just to leave her somewhere. She wouldn't have survived more than a month. The whims and vigor of a duchess, but she was just a sorceress with no memory. We were in the heart of the Empire. And as I'm sure you know, Geralt, in Nilfgaard, mages who behave like that either drop their bad habits quickly or are drawn and quartered by horses in the middle of Victory Square. So I heard. So we set out, wandered through the provinces. Everywhere we went, she got in trouble and we pulled her out. And then one day they captured us. The Imperial Secret Police. Me, Ark, Sarit, and Yennefer. Imperial Secret Police? Mm-hmm. We were separated, and they questioned us. Long and thoroughly. 
but it was uneventful. No violence. That's how I met Vatia Derrido. And a couple of weeks later, the Emperor himself. Me. A simple witcher. What happened to Yennefer? I don't know. Never saw her again. The Emperor offered me a mission in the Northern Kingdoms. As for Yennefer, I had the feeling she was somehow important to Emir. As I see it, they learned of the Lodge from her. Those Imperial spooks have their ways. All I heard is that Vatier had his men watch Yennefer closely throughout the time she was at the palace. Then we went off to slay the kings of the north. And that's where my knowledge ends. So she's in the Empire? She was when I left. How did you know where we'd find the Wild Hunt? Every Witcher who wears the Viper around his neck knows the place. We had so many books and scrolls about the hunt that I used to think our school was founded for the very purpose of solving the riddle of the Spectral Riders. Know who they are? You know the true identities of the Riders? From what I understand, they're some damn elven race. But they turned out to be a big ruse. The legendary omen of war proved to be a fairground attraction. No Market Square mage could possibly conjure up a cavalcade of wraiths speeding across the sky. Then there's the amnesia. No, there's something more, I assure you. Go ahead, enlighten me. I can tell you want to. There are a lot of legends and myths about it, but the Wild Hunt is a fact. I've fought and killed many of its wraiths. They were spectral emanations, the avatars of real riders. The riders we ran into by the Hanged Man's Tree. Are you telling me you were carried off by elves? Real material sons of bitches like the ordinary kind we deal with in this world? They may be ordinary in their world, but they're strangers in ours. The conjunction of spheres, know the theory. Do you know how monsters appeared in our world? There's not a Witcher who doesn't know that. So you know there are other spheres. The most powerful of our mages can open passages between these worlds, and they usually do that to summon the monsters we then have to hunt. The elves we saw come from another world, and they weren't summoned. They found the way on their own. It's not exactly easy, so they usually send their spectral emanations. They come in person on special missions. As they did for you and Yennefer. Mm -hmm. So, elves from another world and their trained wraiths. What do they want from you? I've got an idea. But that's not your concern. How did a Witcher agree to kill humans at another human's bidding? At the Emperor's bidding, Geralt. And he's no ordinary human. The rulers of the North come up to about where his Polines end. Why? Simple. He promised to rebuild the School of the Viper. The Witcher's Order, where I came to be. Witcher's schools in the South fell into ruin long ago. And Witcher's themselves became internal exiles, banned from entering most cities. Besides Seret and Ox, I know of two other Witchers of the School of the Viper, who should be alive and on the path. I don't know where they are. Haven't seen them for years. Now they can come out of hiding. They can come home. Why are you still here? Why did you wait for me this time? I knew you wouldn't give up. I knew you'd pursue me. And I don't aim to hide anymore. Fact is, only you know the truth about me. Well, and a couple of folks whose word isn't worth spit anymore. I never saw you as a foe. I want to go my way. But if I have to fight you first, so be it. The story ends here and now. Care to tell me what it was all about? Hmm. Kill as many rulers as we could. Lay the blame on the sorceresses. Breed chaos. Prepare the north. 
Softnet before the invasion. And you know what's incredible? We could not have imagined more fertile soil. No matter what the war's outcome, the Northern Monarchs will accuse one another. Pursue their God-given rights. Seek vengeance and be at each other's throats for years to come. The North resembles a whorehouse on fire. As your friend Dandelion would say, How did you manage to contact Sheila? It wasn't a problem once I learned of the Lodge's existence. Initially, she watched my every move. But sooner or later, everyone starts treating me like a big oaf. I mean, I can't change how I look. I stayed close to Sheila, killed a few beasts for her, and whined about how unhappy I was, how unfair the world was. So much, in fact that I actually got her gander up a few times. I made sure a few potentially trustworthy witnesses saw us together, could link us. Security in case I was captured. I also prepared to assassinate the King of Kavir. Esterad Tyson was to be the first victim of the mysterious assassins. But before I could do the dirty deed, Sheila asked me to slay Demavend. The gods had smiled upon me. I couldn't believe my luck. Here I'd been trying to figure out how to frame Sheila. And now all I needed was to carry out her orders and follow through. Where'd you get your information about the Lodge? From the Emperor and Vatir Durido, the Emperor's chief spy. And I believe they got it out of Yennefer. She recovered her memory? Nah. I'd never claim she informed on her friends consciously. I expect they found a way to tap into her memory in spite of her amnesia, and without her knowing it. There was a sorcerer present when I was questioned. A young, proud intelligence officer. Whatever the case, they gave me a list of the sorceresses in the Lodge. Only Emir, Vatir, and I were present. Only we knew of the mission. How do you manage to slay Demavend? Sheila's magic. I mean, she could give us the King's every move. His habits, the positions of the palace guards, anything. All we had to do was navigate the labyrinth and land the final blow. Besides, she had plenty of gold for the preparations greased palms abundantly. It had all the makings of a cakewalk, but it's never that easy. We barely avoided our pursuers, and we wouldn't have if not for Yarveth Skyatel, another of Sheila's ideas. With Yarveth's elves, not only did we cut down Demavand, but traveling with them put us out of the Lodge's reach. We could calmly plan fall tests and Hensel's assassinations. How did you know fall test would come to the monastery solar? Yorveth and I planned fall tests murder. The king of Temeria would have to deal with the Lavalette sooner or later, and he made no secret of it. I was sure he'd want to recover his bastard children in the process. And where do they take the children when a castle's under siege? I had to become a monk, but I couldn't just arrive at the monastery and claim I'd seen the light. Not very believable. So one of Arion's patrols out in the forests happened on a Skyatel unit torturing a helpless monk. Arion's brave men drove off the elves and I found shelter in the monastery. No one noticed you had no wounds? I paid the monk who treated me a lot of orange to stay silent. Actually, it was only a loan. Because I killed him later. Only the dead can keep a secret. Then all I had to do was wait for the situation to develop. When I saw you enter the chamber with Faltes, I thought I might fail. Luckily, you failed. To recognize an old friend. When did you decide to get rid of Yorva? As soon as I realized I couldn't manipulate him. 
a true fox, that one. He was so observant, so dangerous. I got the sense he might see through me at any moment. You made a mistake. You were untouchable as long as the Scoia'tael were protecting you. Maybe, but with Yorveth, my hands were tied. If I'd finished off Kieran... But you didn't. And that allowed me to drive a wedge between you and Yorveth. I forced you to flee. And I let you live. You know I could have killed you. You're forgetting. No, I remember. So Sheila was looking for you when she came to Flotsam. Mm-hmm. She thought she was still in control and wanted to get rid of me. I'd bet my eyes that she thought I'd lost my mind, or that Yorveth was manipulating me. And the North descended deeper into chaos. Exactly. There was just one problem. You. I could have killed you in the Elven Ruins. Thing is, you weren't really my enemy. You screwed up with Henselt. Sabrina's curse tore that down. First off, we got holed up in that hideout in the ravines. Then Sheila showed up and started watching Henselt like he was her own ass. By that time, his death was no longer necessary. Fate had smiled upon us again. I learned of the summit and the efforts to reconstitute the Council and Conclave. The ideal setting for the mission's grand finale. What's inc no matter what the North I'm done talking. Let's finish this. Wanna fight? Any vodka left in that bottle? A swig of peace. Here. Fortune brings people together. Very shortly, the North could be united like never before, thanks to you. But that's just not my concern anymore. I'm not your foe. I never was. Let me walk away and I will. You'll never see me again. Force me to fight. And this time I'll kill you. I've learned all I wanted to know. I can feel the memories coming back. Your death won't change a thing. Go where you will. Just like that. No threats. No words of wisdom. Are you going or not? <sighs> Farewell, Geralt.
The Witcher had traveled far and wide in search of the Kingslayers. Along the way, he had met both the Righteous and Scoundrels, Bernard Lurito amongst the latter. Lurito sold Flotsam to Kedwin and scattered the local non-humans to the Four Winds. Flotsam became a military base. Its civilian population was resettled. In Edern, the Witcher witnessed Saskia the Dragonslayer achieve a great victory. The Pontar Valley, previously Upper Edern, became a promised land for outcasts who dared dream of freedom. Even sly old Zoltan Chive came to believe in this land of bliss. Yet dark times approached for the architects of the New Order. Dark clouds had been gathering over Temeria since Foltest's death. Stripped of its king, the land was like a rich cloth which nobles began to shred. These minor scavengers, however, scurried off in fear when true predators reached out for their prize. The summit at Loch Muin sealed the fate of Foltest's realm, when Radovid of Redania and Henselt of Kedwin divided it between them. Years before, Geralt of Rivia had witnessed the fall of the Council and Conclave of Mages. The summit in Loch Muin re-established both bodies. Their founders sacrificing Sheila de Tanzerville and her accomplices. Yet Radovid also required humility and loyalty from the proud mages, but this did not sit well with all of them. It was a time of great uncertainty, of rape accomplished by royal decree. Yet as troubled as the day seemed, we, who had in some way shaped the world's fate, finally received some respect. Zoltan resumed the quest for his beloved's hand, and I laid my head in the laps of the muses. Who could have known this tempest which had ravaged the north was but a harbinger of darker days, and the preamble to an entirely new tale of Geralt of Rivia?
Thank you.